Hi everyone, Tim the Plain Man here and welcome to Plain Time Winter Wonderland Painted Eagle Edition. As you can see, it's snowing and it's a bit cold. So bloody cold and perfect time for, well, a walk. I'm going to have a walk because I love to walk out in the snow. And the second thing is, well, when I get back home, it'll be on the bench, painted eagle, and we'll give you an update. Well, I'm not flying in this weather. Uh, I haven't flown for about a week. And before that, although I, I, I was flying almost every day, well, maybe every second day, and uh, it, because we had unseasonably warm weather, above zero or close to zero degrees, which is, you know, I can fly in that, and I do. But in the meantime, I've made some progress. And I wanted to give you an update on the Painted Eagle because the unboxing and the early um, work on it was, was actually a couple of months ago already. And you might think, well, what happened? And what happened is I've been slowly working away on a few little bits and pieces. But now, with this weather like this, I am full steam ahead on planning to get this thing running so that once it does warm up, hopefully I can... I can fly this plane, which would be, I'm really, really, really looking forward to flying this plane. It's a beautiful plane. The more I work with it, the more I'm dying to get it in the air. So let's take a look at what I've done uh, with the plane. Big picture. Uh, fundamentally, it boils down to electronics. And the electronics is, well, almost done. I'm going to test it next. And I might do another video with the testing but um, I want to show you what I've got. So, okay, so what I have here, I've mounted on the tail a Runcam Thumb Pro. And uh, if you can see from this side, what you should be able to see is that I've basically buried the wires inside the tail plane here. So it, basically the Runcam Thumb Pro needs power, needs five volts. And I had to run a one meter long cable uh, had to make and, and run a one meter long cable, which I saw. I buried it in here. Then from here, it goes right inside this um, really nice little hole uh, where I also have my Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver uh, installed with its antenna right here on the tail, out of the way of anything else for minimal interference. I have a theory that I'm going to put a 915 megahertz band express LRS on here so this is somewhat temporarily mounted but in any case that is there so the way that this works is the wire for the express LRS receiver goes through here and there's a um, through this really uh, cavernous mounting bay in the back with access. If you haven't seen my previous video on this, the, the ESC for the rear mount motor, which is uh, here, um, the rear motor ESC is mounted here in the bottom of the plane, and I won't turn it over, but um, it it's basically exposed underneath for cooling purposes, which may not need in this weather, but will when it warms up. So what I have here is I've got the rest of the, the wire for that uh, Runcam Thumb Pro runs under th here and through into here and into the flight controller uh, cat compartment here. It's one of the things I just love about this plane is the just the the space and the access that you've got for everything. So I have uh, a flight controller, a Zealot 8743 flight controller installed in here. It's wired to the power distribution board, which we'll look at in a minute. It's wired to the servos, which if you actually, if we go back under here, you'll notice that, um, that the servo wires for uh, elevator and rudder are already pre-installed and run through from the back of the plane, come in through, through here. And then the wires for the which I did talk about in my previous video, the wires for the ailerons come in through these um, pre-built wire holes that enter from the 
camera compartment into here. So we've got ailerons, elevator, rudder. And what I ended up doing with the ailerons and uh, elevator, so the elevators have each have their own servo. And there's a quick release mechanism for installing the, the elevator in there, clips it in, and it works quite nicely. But what actually happened was I originally installed the, uh, so there's two separate servo wires that run from the back through to here, and I put a wire connector on, and uh, what I found was that, of course, um, just because of how they mounted like this, uh, the elevators moved in opposite directions, so you you can't wire it with a wire connector. And you, yes, you get one of those inverter, special inverter connectors. The simpler answer is to just run the elevators off two separate channels on the flight controllers. So that's what I've done. I've basically put the elevators onto a C10 and C11 channel, 10 and 11. So there's a lot of interesting things going on in this compartment with the flight controller. First of all, under here. Uh, let's see, where can you see that? Yes, you can see that in the top view here. So what we have here is a Hollybro CAN hub, which is a separately powered hub for running uh, CAN-based devices. So the GPS, and really hard to see in here, but mounted right in the back there, Shelltech CAN uh, airspeed sensor. And the airspeed sensor is connected to the pitot tube, which is right here at the front of the plane which is pre-installed. So that pitot tube runs through here, here, down to here, and then the airspeed sensor is connected in there. That both of those connect to this hub. Uh, I may be installing one other, one or two other devices on that hub. Uh, one of them may be a LiDAR um, and or a range finder and I haven't decided on that yet. And the second one may be an external compass. It'll depend how well the compass works. I love how this flight controller is mounted. The um, mounting board, this is a mounting board which has uh, rubber standoffs on here for uh, vibrations protection. And of course I use my, um, my I'll, I'll screw on my uh, flight controller into that top board so that it still gets the benefit of those rubber mounts and still gives access to almost everything running off here. You'll see what I've done is I've, I've installed one of these little L um, USB connectors just because it's so hard to get access to the USB uh, port um, from the side. It's really easy just to get a USB adapter like that that I can plug in. The four motor wires again that run in through the, through the wings through these quick release connectors are wired into the um, two ports uh, to channel eight, seven, six, and five here. And I've got, so I've got um, ailerons. So what I decided to do with the, with the channels, with the outputs, is I run uh, separate wires for the ailerons. I like to, to separate the ailerons rather than running a wire, just because it gives you the ability to separately trim the, each aileron. You can trim the center point and you can trim them in max independently uh, because they're on separate channels on the flight controller, which is, uh, which is nice. So I've got a aileron, aileron throttle. I only need one throttle output um, for the forward motor. Um, so that's the forward motor output is on channel three. Channel four is rudder. And then channel five, six, seven, and eight are the four motors, which we'll see later. And then, uh, so power distribution board, I've got, and on my connectors on the front, I have here, I have, so you have four, which is normally a GPS port, but I'm not connecting GPSs to the GPS port because I'm using CAN. So I've got two free UARTs or other port that I can use. And so what I'm using that for is, that's running, um, actually runs back to the, Express LRS. So Express LRS is running off UART4 and then UART2 is running the connection to the Raspberry Pi. The last port that I've got connected, thing that I've got connected on the front here is the safety switch. So I've, I've put the safety switch here temporarily. I don't like where it is right now, but I want to figure out where the best place to put it is once I have the wings on and the 
motors installed. What we have here is we have the wiring. Now considering how much wiring there is in this plane, and oh my god, uh, it was a lot. Um, okay, the plane comes out of the box, basically physically assembled, but there is a lot of wiring, especially the wiring out to the wings. But without getting into the details of that, it's quite, quite nice, um, kind of satisfying to have all of this space to be able to organize the wiring so nicely. So you can't really see it here, but underneath, I'm gonna bend it down again. Underneath here in the front is the, the, the power distribution board that comes with the plane. So that takes power in from the front, which will be um, some uh, success batteries. I think I'll run a couple of large success batteries in parallel. And then the power needs to get from, from this power distribution board. So it provides outputs for the two ES, or the two ESC feeds for four motors out to the wings and those, those go out through these two wires out to the wings through this connector which is nice and clean. Um, there's this wire here which provides the power to the ESC at the back and then it provides these um, two connectors here. There's one connector here for, um, so let me see, you, can, you can see that. Uh, one connector here provides um, extra power, battery power out. And what I've done is I've run that through and let's see you can see inside there. You can see that I've got like a, um, an octopus port. So basically it's a Hollybro power distribution board, mostly I think designed for drones, but um, it has an input power and then six outputs. Now I've only used two of them right now. I'll probably end up using three or maybe four. Uh, but it's just so much nicer than having to manually solder a bunch of stuff and it's easy to figure out where exactly everything goes. So, so I've cleanly got connected in there a, and you can see them here, two becks. There's one back here, which is for five volts to provide power to the Raspberry Pi. And there's another back here, which provides five volts and that feeds that run can thumb all the way up here in the tail. So I'll go all the way up from there, from, from here. And so that's um, nicely wired. And then the wires on this side of the plane are actually fairly easy to keep, con keep in control. There's the power distribution board wiring here. You can see that one. And then the wire to the motors. And uh, there is a second battery output wire that I ran through to here and that goes through to a beck in here that feeds the power to the, um, the can hub. There seems to be a lot there. I might do a diagram and uh, we'll see if we put that up. But that, um, yeah, I probably will do a diagram, but not in this video. So you'll have to subscribe to see the next video where I put up the diagram with the wiring diagram. Uh, lastly, and pretty simply, we have the front of the plane, and here we have power distribution board, which I've built a little mounting plate for on the front, just to hold it out of the way, and then uh, the battery will connect on there, and then the the little fancy little pedo tube that they provide. which again, we talked about the airspeed sensor being mounted back here. That connects through this tube to the pedo tube that mounts on the front of the plane, like that. So there's one other thing that I want to be able to do that I haven't done yet, and that will be to uh, put a HD0 FPV on here. And I think I've figured out that if I mount it sideways, I should be able to mount the FPV camera on the top in this mounting plate here. So that's what that will be for. So the one other thing I guess I want to show you is the wing. And I don't always keep that here because it's, uh, well, it's just big. And so it's a little awkward. Um, I have the wiring running through here from the mount, the plug, which will connect into the side of the, the plane here. That runs power through to the, um, 
to the motors. I'll show you that in a second. And the ailerons out here. And I have tested this, it actually does work. So what will happen is that these wings will plug in to these quick release plugs on the side there. And then these motor mounts will connect and clip into the wings underneath. So that's all wired up now. I have the, the, the wiring fully wired into the, into the, um, these booms and all that needs to happen, uh, is pretty much, um, well, it's, it's testing time. So stay tuned. It will, we will test this, but basically what happens is you plug the wing in here. This clips onto here and that connects into that quick release plug there. So it's really going to be awesome for, for setting up out of the field. It'll be just a couple of, you know, clip in the tail plane, clip in the wings and then clip on the motors and Bob's your uncle. I will probably just run some tape over here, I think, um, to cover that, uh, that wiring area, uh, duct tape. Duct tape is wonderful for this. I just discovered duct tape. For the longest time, I've been using packing tape. Uh, I've been using Gorilla tape, which works quite well. And now I've just discovered duct tape. Now duct tape is a kind of brand, specific brand of duct, duct tape. Um, and you, I don't know, I can buy it at Home Depot or Rona uh, or Lowe's. But um, I don't know, you may find it online, you may find it at your local hardware store. The inter interesting thing about duct, duct tape, duct brand duct tape, is that it's, it's thinner. First of all, it's, it's thinner and it's smoother. So it creates a nice smooth surface from an airflow perspective, less drag. And it, it creates a really secure connect, uh, like glue, or it sticks really well, let's say. And, and so for all of those reasons, um, I started using duct tape where, and I will probably duck over there, just run a piece of duct, duct tape over there to, um, to cover up this, to re basically remove the drag when the plane's flying. And, uh, that will be, that will be that. So, you know, as you can see, everything is pretty much there except for the FPV camera which I don't really want to install until I've done some basic hover tests and um, some tuning and that kind of thing so I'll, that will be the last thing to go in and everything else well she's pretty much ready so uh, stay tuned sometimes I will be what I'm going to do now while it's the snow is coming down even harder outside. Well, first I'm gonna go for a walk in the snow. Secondly, I'm gonna uh, connect these together um, fire and fire up the motors and make sure that, um, that everything's working, that the motors are connected to the right outputs um, using you know, the autopilot setup instructions following the autopilot wiki to get that information, to get that all set up. So this plane, the Painted Eagle, is really coming together. It's a beautiful plane and stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be fun getting it in the air. Tim the Plane Man from Winter Wonderland, over and out. <laughs>